Let's uh, call the meeting to order. I think we're all here. Uh, Liz. Yep. What? Your minutes. Oh, my minutes. <laughs> yes. Your minutes. Did you get them? Uh, yes. I, I did. Okay. I got yes. them online, yes. yes. We got them. Um, any, anyone have any comments? No, I move then, that we accept the minutes as presented. Do we have a second? Second. Okay. I think Bruce. Did Bruce second it? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Aye. I think we have to do the routine. Yep, we do. I'm Patrick. Okay, thank you, Patrick. Aye, Ranny. Hi, Mark. Hi, Liz. Hi, Jan. Uh, Bruce. Bruce. Hi, Bruce. Thank you. Hi, <laughs> Bruce. Okay, and I, if there, there were two versions, right? The last version is the one? Yes. Okay, which one were you taking out? <laughs> okay, we just approved the second uh, version. I'm going to skip the next item oh, until okay. the materials come. You want to also approve the we, October 19th we have as, to as approve, amended? Right, as amended, which, as amended which was so taking out the word. We added the word not. Right. Which was an important word. Right. Yes. It okay. would change the character or would not change the character. So Patrick would that. not. Okay. Right. Okay. Uh, second. I second. Uh, okay. All those in favor? Hi, Patrick. Hi, Jan. Hi, Liz. Hi, Mark. Hi, Ranny. Hi, Bruce. Excellent. Okay. okay. Right. We're going to skip the Pinewoods for the minute and come back to it. Um, this is uh, just a, a very quick report. Uh, thanks to Patrick who sleuthingly, just in fact, Patrick, why don't you say, because you're the one that found this, the block grant. Uh, so I, I had a nice lunch with a, a gentleman named George McGurn and his wife, Mary McGurn, and she is, or was on the planning board in Egremont, and he is, I believe, the chair of the planning board in Egremont. And we were talking about how we both applied for a community block grant program for the first time in the same year, 2019, and they're on their fourth round. And we never even got our first round off the ground. And the difference, of course, was that we were using uh, two different consultants. And so uh, the plan, I believe, now that you've taken taken that nugget of information, run with it, Randy, is to use their consultant. Right. And uh, so at, uh, Patrick was able to get the identity of this company. It's called uh, Boyd Bailey Consulting. And the only thing they do is they help small towns and they're very focused in the western part of the state and they apply on behalf of these towns for these block grants. Mm -hmm. They're excellent, by the way. Oh, do you know them? Done, oh, God, yes. And they've done a ton of work across the Cape. Um, no, Alice Boyd's excellent. Cool. Good. Yes. Um, which is what everybody says, including Smitty, who seems to go around recommending that every town <laughs> use them. Oh, good. Um, so I called, uh, so this is a tag team effort between Patrick and myself. So I called Alice. Alice said, well, I'm not sure because of a lot of reasons it didn't, she was not sure we would be able to, one, qualify, or two, get in on this year's. So she gave it to her daughter, whose name is Casey Boyd Mask. And Casey called me the next day, and we had a little conversation, and then she called me back 10 minutes later, and she says, you're in, mm -hmm. and uh, we have to figure out which other town you're going to be with to apply. You need two towns, minimum? Is minimum. Of, they usually have two or three towns, and okay. it may be um, Lenox is one of them, or it may be Sheffield, or mm -hmm. maybe something else. Did Sheffield get shafted in the last round? No, it was... Uh... It was, it was all for Sheffield, uh, Sheffield, and Stockbridge. Yeah, so I don't know whether that was just the one that we're in. Yeah, yeah. but um, anyway, I think they are now managing all pretty much. If you name a town, they're managing it. And she was very excited. She called me back ten minutes later and said, "You're in, and we'll let you know what you have to do, which is practically nothing." Um, she wants one contact point. Perhaps she usually works with a selectman. She says. So maybe Patrick will be agree to be the contact point or Michael. And um, they do all the work. They fill out all the forms. We provide them with a little bit of information. And <clears throat> after they get the grant, which they have almost 100 percent track record, um, they the, the way they get paid, we don't pay them anything for their services. And they're compensated as part of the grant in the distribution. 
So they um, and then do they do some administering of it while it if, if so it's in do, place? They do the they do everything. Okay, because there's applications people right. make and they get the they find the people, they qualify them, they give out the money. Right. To let us know. Is oh, look who's here! Come in, come in. Can you Hi, just, Joanna. Hey, are you hello. Can you give me the, the, Casey you give me the qualifying is an important Jesus point. The honor. Pardon? I don't know. Uh, the, they've done about fifteen Egermont. Thank you. We've done about 15 Egremont, and a, I don't know, seven or eight of them Joanna, were not up were chair disqualified here. because of Novin 2. And it's not a ton of money to, to remediate that, but that might be a, a use of local funds that mm -hmm. we, we might want to uh, deploy because the, this program, which is federally funded, for some reason didn't fund for the kind of remediation, the, the pre-work sometimes you need to do. So, you know, we want to kind of bear in the, put in the back of our mind that we may want to take that piece on. Do we need to identify the other town? Or no, no, other they, town? they do that. They find the town. And she was able to, there's something about that you have to be or do to qualify. And she was able to know what those requirements were. She was able to check that out and get back to me in literally 10 minutes and say, it's OK. She said, uh, there'll be a little time, probably won't hear much until middle of December or so anymore. So uh, how do they determine how large a grant to go? None of the specifics. I think it's the order of magnitude is a million to a million three. So it's three or four hundred thousand dollars per town per per year per year. Every month's on their fourth year and we didn't even get one off the ground. That's so what we're, were those four the other folks four different applications or four different four different rounds? So they just kept going. And they just phased, they split they changed the town every year. Right, right. Well, we had it was one point two million I think for the one we got knocked out on, but that was for four towns. So I don't know if we'd mm -hmm. be applying for that much with two. Mm -hmm. Still, it could be. Did you get the same size grant for two towns as? I mean, well? I think that um, I think that yeah. uh, you know, it's, uh, it seems to be three four hundred thousand. I mean, she uh, they would know. But per year, but you know, you yeah. took it, you know, that as a over five or ten years, and it, oh, it picks a lot of houses, yeah, yes, you can. Yeah, uh, one of the things that we might try to do at our next meeting is ask, um, ask her to, um, it's Casey, the daughter who's going to handle our account, mm -hmm. and ask her to be on the phone or be mm -hmm. on Zoom with us, yeah. and then mm -hmm. everyone can ask whatever questions you'd like. But, um, typically, it's not our group that provides the energy. Typically, it's mm -hmm. it's uh, the selectman or the town administrator. But and these were for, again, low or no interest loans for the repairs, I'm trying to recall. It's, uh, I, I believe it's, uh, it's grants, not loans. Grants, OK. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, just for the tape purposes, we're talking about a program with grants to allow people to fix up homes. Income, be qualified. income qualified. Mm -hmm. Things like furnaces, roofs, windows, you know, that sort Insulation. of thing. So we're trying to get a grant to yeah. get as many families as we can. Every year, in fact. Which yeah. goodness, exactly. Exactly. That's the community development. So that's a little little bit of good news. So if you don't mind, I'm going to go would, back about, and yeah. talk up, give you an update on Pine Woods uh, on our, our uh, playground project. And John has been working on this uh, quite diligently and has uh, produced this plan. So... To orient you, these two photographs, that's a close-up, and this is this is the circle for oh. Pine Woods, and this area right here, this is the uh, playground down here, and this is the current garden site. Right. Somebody have a, 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 drone. a drone over there? Well, I, I hired somebody to do a drone photo. Friend of drone person. Yeah. <laughs> Good. That's so, great, Nick. So, right. So, based on on that, the area is approximately. This is the um, I don't know north and south anyway. <laughs> on that on that aerial view, this is the top of it. And this is the um, no. This is the top right here. I don't understand what top means because you can hold it anywhere. The circular row. Yeah. <laughs> well, 
on the board where the playground is pl placed on this uh, display, it's uh, it's where the present playground is, but expanded. That, how, that top is that. And where the in this garden is where the community garden currently is, but redesigned. Annie, could you move your hand? Oh, sorry. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's upside down. There this is the cemetery. No, <laughs> please. No, it's not that. It's the current playground. This is so this fun. this bottom of the the new playground proposal is where the old playground is right mm -hmm. down here. It's quite small. And this this is if you if you see this is a, the circle driveway going around. And we can pass this down, but this is the um, the what Joanne and I call the top of the piece of of, of uh, land that's being used. And it's the wide part. Basically what's happened is we've just redesigned the lot, the wide part of the upper garden. So now, how many did you say we have now? What, Bo uh, there's beds. 10 beds. We have right 10 up. beds. And now the new proposal has 18 beds, mm -hmm. which are bigger than the old ones. Uh, most much better organized in the proposal where you see white space. The brown space are the the beds, and the white spaces are the walkways in between. In the in this uh, drawing, so if you want to pass that down, so Janet. That's nice. So. And. Um, what is this doing to the budget? The budget that we have, which I have copies of that for you, for the playground, we don't have. Uh, I've got two pieces of documents here. I'm sure we can fit the garden into the same budget. Right. Here's the budget. I didn't. My, I ran out of ink, so I only have a copy of it. But we we'll just pass it along. Here's here's the detail. The company that um, Joanna, uh, we're, we're, Joanna and I've been playing tag team on this. There's a company called. What's the first one you went to? Uh, oh, um, O'Brien's and so O'Brien. There's a company called O'Brien that does very big things, and that was a conversation that Joanna had been having for a couple of years. We weren't getting very good response from from that company, and so you knew of the of the playground over at the um, at at the synagogue in in uh, in Great Barrington. Do people know the, that synagogue? They have a, a, a nursery school there, and um, they have a great play, a really great playground there, and it's made by a company called Miracle. And so we got in touch with the lady who represents Miracle, and I'm going to pass this along. These are color pictures <laughs> of what's being proposed for us. So this that you see on the big drawing is a site plan, and then these are some colored pictures of what the equipment, there's four pieces of equipment and it includes, uh, she put the, the, the edging in the estimate, didn't she? Yeah. It, it, it has an edging around it. You'll see it looks like a curb in the pictures. ADA compliant ramp. Yes, and an ADA uh, compliant ramp so that it, a child in a wheelchair can get into the playground. What's this uh, surf the bottom, the, the grounding like? Uh... It's mulch. It's a special kind of mulch okay. that meets some very. It's untreated. And there's no chemicals in it, so it's untreated mulch. But it also is some compaction standard. There's oh, you, I think the standard is uh, 18 inches. You have to have 18 inches of minimum. Right. This is a lot of mulch. It, it's a lot of mulch. But it's um, just, but yeah, it's untreated mulch. So. So the children be soft enough if kids and it's softer yeah it's cut differently that's a lot of <laughs> so, we're, so we're they're planning on using mulch instead of that somewhat absorbent rubberized <laughs> base that a lot of the playgrounds are now using that, that's that's including including the big slide that's outside of uh, city hall in boston and whatnot i mean that's the safest thing for them uh, no. uh, it's not. It's it's. There are chemicals in it. Um, I I know too much about cancer and those things. And Don't environmental. Go there. <laughs> it's actually much um, more expensive. It's it's a lot more expensive, Bruce. And um, this is the mulch is as uh, qualified as that material you're referring to. So, uh, so we we 
we thought that the mulch was a good was a good option. Okay. Uh, the the bid. The, uh, there's the, when you get into this, uh, which we could be here all day talking about this, but that there's there are two ways to get it installed. It's one thing to buy the equipment; it's another thing to get them in place. And clearly, the installation is a, is a key part of the whole thing. So there are two ways to do it. One, you pay, which is a lot more expensive, or two, you do what's called community build. And with community build, you this particular company brings um, a, a whole crew that supervises the volunteers. So we're going to, uh, Joanna and the trust will need to, and the town will need to find 20 to 30 people for one day. And we unload the equipment off the truck and the people tell us what to do. And we do things like hand them the screws when they need the screws and hand them part A when they need part A and things like that. There's one not, person per part. Is that how it works? It, that, it looks like. <laughs> and we need a couple of hundred. But yeah, we, 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 we did that when we built the big playground in Lexington. So oh, did you? all the fathers and some of the mothers were out there schlepping, schlepping timbers and bags yeah. of screws and bolts and everything else along with the, uh, the company that was providing us the guidance to do it. It was it was actually a fun day and a great community event. Community. Oh, that's really nice to hear, Bruce. I didn't know. That was before we lived there. Yes, um, it was probably at least 30 years ago, 25 years ago. Oh, my um, goodness. It was, a, it was a great event. And <clears throat> last time I drove by, the, the playground is still standing. So I guess we did okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's a very the community. It's called community build, and it um, uh, supposedly we can do it with this good help and supervision that we can put the pieces, the four pieces, up yeah. in one day. Um, and, uh, and what about the gardens? Is that going to be with Anna Garden or? Well, uh, Berkshire Botanical Garden has come out and is willing to uh, advise us. Uh, the next step was to take this plan that just happened today. And talk to them about it. Are those See, raised beds? Yes. yes. There's a lot of lumber yeah. involved. Yeah. In that. Right. But that's not part of this budget. No, we don't have a budget for this now. We didn't. Ha we couldn't get a budget till we get a plan, and so we need fences. And, uh, and has Kathy seen that? No, no. You, you all are the first people to see it. Um, so once we have approval here, uh, Liz and I will go and and meet with Kathy and go over. Over the plan, okay. you did get a permit preliminary okay from her, though. We did. We yeah. went. We took her these vi visuals, the, uh, the the aerials, and she was. Uh, wouldn't you say she was enthusiastic? She was. Yeah. And we asked her specifically if there needed to be another layer of appro you know, approval, and she said no. She had the full authority to approve. Mm -hmm. it. So, um, the uh, the pieces that that. Um, uh, the occupants and the families want in this, the swings are very important, which is that straight line on the mat, on the, uh, the board. And then uh, what's called monkey bars. Isn't that for you, Andrix? Yes. Tarantula climber. <laughs> yes. So this climber that's in a circle, and then there's two uh, sides, one for older, uh, bigger and a smaller one. And, is there, and a balance beam, is that a? Yeah, he had, she added a balance beam. Yeah, she had a little extra money, and she said um, she had one that was just laying around okay. that she could throw in there for really cheap. So and it looks like there's some different types of seats. Yes, some yeah. baby. There's a baby toddler seat, and mm -hmm. then there's some other four other regular swings. Yeah, so we have four belt swings, two uh, infant seats. Looks like one. So in this in this green in the green part of this map, where's where the where's the proposed gardens versus the playground? Like what goes where? Can you go over and show us? Yeah, the playground's going to be um, on the right of that photo, and the community garden will be on the left. Okay. And will it go all the way up and down to the top? Is that what this is? It's going to be uh, pretty much the same. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I extended the left-hand side, to, which is the west part of the driveway, uh, about 10 feet from what you see in that picture, but otherwise it's pretty much the same. So the, so it's a little closer. This is where the pencil marks are. Oh, the pencil, yeah, so that is gonna be part of the playground. Um, that, that's the, um, 
the uh, the yardage uh, that she included in the uh, blueprint. Mm -hmm. um, that was the where she took the tape and walked it around and zoned off the space. The minimum clearance for the building is six feet, although I think she went a little further, like 10 feet to be away from the building. But yeah, I think the safety clearance for the building has to be six feet. So we did expand it a little bit for the play, we definitely expanded it for the playground. The community garden only got expanded a little closer to the driveway, um, about 10 feet, and that was it. But I had, I will distribute this, I, I printed, these are the things that we have to do that aren't included in her budget. So if you want to take a look at this. And, um, and, and the, uh, where would we go to tap some funding for the uh, garden? Uh, well, we're hoping that Michael was hopeful that our friends who were not um, good about making sure people mm -hmm. got some of the block grant money right. um, like, will yeah. come back. And he was talking about $40,000 from. Uh, that's not. And then nearly written in, you know, we haven't. That's one source. It's not a plus. Yeah, that seems like it's almost a Hail Mary, but that's just my opinion. <laughs> but uh, in addition, we're going to have to raise that money. Is that what said? The garden part. These are all the same. We have the money. Yep. Yep. There's give a uh, passing line. Yeah. Give a yeah. work on a budget plan for that too, for the garden. And I think that um, the, the Berkshire, the garden. Berkshire Garden is also willing to help us. Yeah, identify. We, we have a lot resources. of garden clubs around the yeah. area. Yeah, and they and that some of them do have money. The Lennox well, Garden Club. Well, they all have money. It's a matter of what they'll park with. But yeah, and to which town. <laughs> yeah, so I I do know one person who's in the Lennox Garden Club, and I know that that's a very old, well-established garden club. Yeah. Um, they do give a lot of money away to projects, similar projects. So I, I might be try to meet with her. See if we can get, get some money from them. That would be nice. Sure. You know, uh, like president Laura Hull was the president of Lennox Garden Club. She's another good one. Too. Who's that? The president of Laura Hull Association. Oh, okay, great. Yeah. And so. I don't know whether wards might might help out. Uh, yeah. With some of the uh, and and Wendy, there there resources in terms of you can't go raise money until you have a proper budget and a proper plan. Right. Yeah. So I think we have a plan that's schematic. It's not. Uh, it's 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 scaled. We we know we know the space. We have a sixty foot by seventy foot space for the garden, and about the same is it sixty by seventy for the playground? I don't know. Um, I don't think it's the same. Uh, it's a little bigger for the yeah, garden she, for the playground. She, yeah, she should have. Um, oh, here it's got the yeah, dimensions. On it. Windy Hill might be another option to pursue uh, yeah. to see if they have any interest in doing some pro bono work. Well, I, th I think I think not just them. I think you could go to every landscaper in town and say, you know, we've got this project going and it would take a day and just because they've done it for different things, too. I remember something with trees. that They came in and fixed oh, yeah, a lot they of trees. Did, they did I'm sure they would, because they certainly charge enough when you're paying full freight for them. <laughs> <laughs> They're also good people. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Very good. And, and so might there be the community day for the playground, like in the spring or something, and try and get this thing yeah. up in May? Well, let's May see. And June. The, the thing, we Patrick, if, the if you could first. confirm, I know that the money, the bulk of the money, the tenth, we voted 10000 and ARPA funds, right, is 30 that That's what we're counting on for the 40000 to do the playground. Yeah. Um, I think so. I, yeah. I mean, you the the selectmen have have voted to to right. for the purpose of the playground. The the question is, do we have to come back with this plan um, to the selectmen before December thirty? Selectmen has nothing to do with it. They right. basically it's just you work it out with Michael, and we just have to make sure that how, how the money we spend follows the regular procurement rules. But I, it sounds like. Like your vendors and approved vendor already, so right. you know. But I mean, you know, we're we're the funding source. We're not. It's not our property. Yeah, it's not town property. So it's not like okay. Property. But I didn't know whether for the ARPA money you had to have some sort of approval by the end of the year. I know we have to spend it by the end of next year, right? Yeah, I, I don't think the selectmen are going to review it, to my knowledge. Okay. But I don't know. I would ask. What does Michael say? I don't know. He's on vacation. So as soon as he gets back Monday, after Thanksgiving. Uh, I'm going to meet with him with these plans, and and then 
we need to uh, also meet with Kathy after um, so that everybody is all on board. And I'd like to have a some. There's no roller coaster or anything we need to worry about. <laughs> Not yet. And I've been on Phil DJ. Not <laughs> yet. It all changed. Okay. <laughs> all right. Joanna has done a tremendous amount of work on this. Thank, Thank you, you. Joanna. I'm very, very <laughs> grateful. Thank you for uh, considering it. <laughs> so we'll we'll uh, we'll march on. We we'll talk to Michael, and then we talk to Kathy, and um, after that, we need to get Michael to have a contract with the playground people, and then this uh, will need some more thought, more meetings, figuring out how we're going to raise the money for that. Yeah, and I'll be working on the this winter. I'll work on the budget. Uh, I could probably get that after the holidays, get that together for what it will cost to do this. And um, I'll also be putting together some flyers for the community builds. I'll start reaching out to other businesses that you mentioned and see if I can drum up enough volunteers for the playground and, and also for the garden. Um, I'm also going to reach out to um, somebody suggested to reach out to Meadow Farm. The guy that owns Meadow Farm yeah. has been generous in the past with mulch for similar type projects. See if yeah. we can get some of that mulch for free. Um, we have this quadrant here is, is a, a stone walkway, the little white pebbles, but in between the beds is going to be mulch, so we don't have to worry about mowing it. Um, so if we can get some mulch donated for in between the beds, that would be great. That would save a bunch of money. Yeah. So I'll just start reaching out to people and see what I can get together before February or March. There's a, the, the elements of the garden are a new fence all the way around it, a shed, which they don't have now, so people can keep their tools there, um, the beds, which are raised beds in the wood, and then the materials. Mm -hmm. The stone and the mulch that go. Yeah. So it's it's and there's four gates into it. Um, so I, I uh, it's not going to be without some cost. But yeah, a lot of soil to fill those raised yeah, beds right. too. And soil to you can't exactly. fill. What? Yeah. You can't fill. Right. We have to fill the beds. I just mean the, oh, in, within the, the wood, bed. within yeah, the rain. And just I, I mean I did I mean just and this is just my two cents worth. That has nothing to do with. Affordable Housing Trust or other positions, but yeah, some of the beds that are already there seem like several of them were used in any given year, but not all of them. You're, you, you know, this is a, you're going to have to kind of drum up support for gardening if you're going to build 18 of these, mm -hmm. you know, but. I don't think that'll be an issue. I think no. a lot of people haven't been using them because A, they never, it never gets mowed there. Like that area never gets mowed. So it, for some people, it, it mm -hmm. was just too much work to get in and out and to, um, keep the weeds out because the reason why there's so many weeds in our beds, it's just because the grass never gets mowed. And so with the mulch, that'll cut down a lot of the weed and weeding. And um, I think it'll be a lot easier for people to, and they'll want to use it because it'll be a nice new space. Um, we do have, you know, we do have, uh, I would say eight people now that are using the beds, uh, some of which are using them to supplement their um, uh, vegetable grocery bill um, and then you know some of these beds are longer uh, than the others and I think depending on family size the people with the bigger families are going to get the bigger beds uh, there's a few smaller beds that singles can use but um, I think it I think people will be inspired to use the community garden um, once it's if it's all fresh and new and there's no weeds to you know, because build it and they will come yes Is there any like seating like in this in the square around the uh, around the buildings that we're talking about, this rectangle, are you thinking about kind of just a common area where people either be watching their kids or watching their friends garden or just hanging out on benches and just enjoying each other? Is there a place to just commune as part of this design? Because that would that's a good idea. Um, I think so everybody's younger gardening or young. Not everyone has kids and or it has an interest in gardening, but kind of creating community. Yeah, some benches or a picnic table or something would be nice. Yeah, my original design had a couple picnic tables, but we really kind of cut down on the bed space. But I'm sure we could probably add a few benches around no. the playground and the um, space. We just kind of were trying to get the necessities down first, and uh, in terms of the budget and. Um, Maybe we can the, work on getting some benches. The opportunities, Patrick, are the center space. Um, 
Yeah, we could use, you know, I, what I had here was some, you know, um, boxwoods, you know, in a circle, but instead of putting boxwoods, we could just make those into benches. You could do that, except that you're, you're not sitting with your children. Yeah. <laughs> so you really need to have something near the playground. Yeah. I mean, because right. if they're one or two or three, you're not going to be sitting out here. Yeah, I mean, we were planning on putting a playground by the playground, or putting a... <laughs> Um, a, a picnic table near the playground anyway. We just didn't um, include it in the, this budget because buying, a, buying a, a, a picnic table from her is a lot more money than mm -hmm. we could get someone to donate one or something. We just, yeah, we definitely had talked about that, but we didn't have it. Well, we have budget. some carpenters in town. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm just going to pass these around, but uh, <clears throat> Joanna put together this. These are just ideas of the cheat envisioned sort of visioning um, sheets for how the what the materials might be uh, and what this garden could look like. And one of the ads is it is this is this um, shed. Oh I don't think I included the shed in there. Right. Oh you have some sheds. Yeah, we got, we got Karen. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, if there are not any other questions, Joanna, thank you. We can move on. All right. Um, Thank you, Joanne. Yeah, you're welcome. Have a good rest of your night. Just quickly, I was in New York this week, and I took the opportunity to meet with the man who owns the property uh, on the corner of Rattlesnake and um, Route 7, which was an interesting experience. And I'd be happy to share individually more at length, but for the purposes of this meeting, um, it was uh, it was an interesting conversation. He has some sort of far, far ranging ideas. Uh, he would like to sell the property, and uh, my sense is of the conversation that he would like to sell it to us. He has some price ideas and things about clearing the site that, uh, in my opinion, aren't very realistic. But um, it was interesting to make, you know, face-to-face -face contact with him. And so now um, we have that if we, um, depending on other things that we're looking into, um, we want to pursue that. Um, we do have a, 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 a good contact. I saw on Facebook today that uh, they're advertising for someone to add solar and a handyman to fix it up. What? At that address? Yeah, yeah. A handyman and solar. That's good. I like solar. You like solar? I do. Yeah. This, is, I like this solar. is for the East Street property. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, Karen and Jan, so, you're on. <laughs> yes. So I want to give each of you a, a copy of this little summary. Thank, Thank you. you. And Bruce, I apologize. I didn't send it out electronically, <clears throat> and I should have. So. You'll have to follow along with us, and I'll send it to you when I get home. Um, and Karen uh, is joining us. Unfortunately, she can only be joining on Zoom because she's been going through COVID <laughs> lately. So oh boy. thank you for joining us on Zoom, yes. Karen. Yes. And, uh, thank you. We're sorry to hear. This is on Zoom. Yes, yeah, it's a bummer. <laughs> oh, what a shame. How are you feeling? You feel all right? Um. You know, I, I am feeling so much better, but you know, I, it's, you it's, I'm, out not, I'm not out of the woods yet, and I'm still testing positive. So, oh, crossed. Yeah. Hopefully, you won't have too much longer to go through that. What we um, <laughs> what we have, Karen was uh, very diligent about sending out about a week ago a draft of not only the rewrite of the assessment part of the housing production plan document, but also uh, the challenges section, which I sent to each of you, uh, and the first draft of the strategy session uh, section of the report. And I read through some of that. I had some questions uh, and also wanted to discuss a few things with her so I held off in sending that out to everyone uh, in hopes that we could have um, a discussion today about what are the highest priority 
things that we as a trust think we should be trying to do over the next uh, five years so that we can have that also be guiding us as we're looking at the housing strategy section of this so that it leads up to, to that. So what I did here uh, was to give you a brief summary of basically what Karen has put into the strategy section, the housing strategy section. And first of all, is in a housing production plan. And Karen, please feel free to jump in along the way here if, uh, if you have things you wanna add specifically right now. But the, the, under the housing production plan regulations, what that does in Massachusetts is allow towns to prepare a housing production plan to increase the subsidized housing inventory by half a percent of the full-time housing inventory, half a percent a year or 1% over two years. Uh, and for Stockbridge, that would mean basically over the next five years, we'd be looking to um, identify up to 27 new affordable housing units that we could be um, bringing into the town. Is this a requirement or a, a guide, a suggestion? Um... I, I don't think it's a requirement. Although it's a requirement. It's a requirement, even if we're over the 10%. Well, if you're going to submit a plan for approval under housing production, it needs to have all the basic um, components that are required under housing production. And that includes charting out um, housing production goals over five years and how you're going to get to the five units per year. Okay. So it's required, the plan is required to look at the five-year period, but is there some penalty or punishment if you don't achieve that or? Oh, no. No, no. all right, so. No, so no, there are no, no demerits. No demerits. Okay. That's a nice place to be in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but I think what it does mean is that we would, we would want to be identifying some of our action plan that would allow us to possibly have identify those 27 that we'd want to be yeah. 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 targeting. We also have to include strategies under uh, the five major categories of strategies that are required in the housing production plan. Um, and so um, in addition to the production goals, there are specific categories of strategies that have to be addressed in the plan. Okay, and some of those I think I've identified from what you wrote up, uh, Karen, are the capacity building for um, housing. No, there are the, those five that we kind of circulated before. You know, one is to make, uh, you know, to identify municipally owned property for development. There are a couple care, you know, identify sites for potential development under a comprehensive permit. There's that, those five, they're included in the draft that I sent you. Right, but those don't, that doesn't mean that we have to, in the plan, identify specific sites. It says yeah. we have, you're saying we do have to do that? We have to deal with those categories of strategies. And so, you know, I think you can kind of get by, um, you know, we've already, yeah, you have to identify some specific strategy sites. But like an expansion of Heaton Court, for example, is an identification of. Sorry, that's not property. property. That's two, there's two buckets right there. Yeah. So, so. I have a question, and this may not be an appropriate uh, time to uh, raise it, mm -hmm. um, but it was something that struck me <clears throat> on the paragraph right after um, on the on the challenges uh, document in the paragraph right after table three dash one on minimum number of required affordable housing units, etc. Um, towards the end of that paragraph. It basically says that any development of offsite units must also be indistinguishable from the market units 
and be equal to or exceed the average construction costs of the development's housing unit. How, how do we expect to build affordable houses when this appears to indicate that the developer has to spend and charge as much for the construction costs of these affordable units as they do for the multi-million dollar units that they're going to be putting up. Where is this section you're referring to? What, where are you on this uh, Bruce, in the challenges us. section? In the paragraph, in the challenges document, okay. it, towards the end of the first page, after in the in, in the paragraph after that, the table three three one on the number of required affordable units. Uh, in that paragraph, it talks about the bylaw requires that all affordable units be dispersed throughout, et cetera, et cetera. And then it further says that any development of offsite units must also be indistinguishable from the market units and be equal to or exceed the average construction costs of the development's housing units. And if somebody's, you know, putting in some affordable units alongside something else that they're doing in a development and they're putting up, you know, a $3 million, $3 million properties, the construction costs for that are going to be so outside of anything that will ultimately result in us being able to charge something or get, provide an affordable housing unit that it won't be affordable unless we somehow are able to obviate this clause. That's a pretty it just traditional an clause when it comes to read. It, it's pretty traditional kind of clause. They have other options though. They can actually provide funding into the housing trust instead yeah, of right. actually providing units. So they're they've got options. Okay. But I just want to be sure that we weren't being hamstrung or bound. That's those by... are existing bylaws. That's a, just a summary of what's. No, I know that. There. I know yeah. that. But I want to be sure that we don't. That's something. It's not something else that we need to think about addressing. Right. Through Patrick and the and the but board selectmen or whatever, um, in order to be able to accomplish what we want to accomplish. Got it. Because if you know. If, if somebody's building something that's, you know, $700 a square foot, we're not going to have an affordable house. No, but they're going to give us the money instead. Yeah, <laughs> I think we should, yeah. The resolution I just, are, I just want to be sure that we paid attention to this clause. Right. Let's, let's well, be clear. The residential inclusionary bylaw creates a tax. If, if they elect to cite it, Site the units on on site because you know the land is a fixed cost. You know it adds a tax that's probably in the six to eight percent range, and if they pay into the trust, it adds a tax in the two to four percent range in terms of the overall cost of the development. It is a tax boost though, and the idea was not to allow people to slap together on the edge of the property a couple of units at hundred bucks a foot when the rest of it you don't want people to feel segregated. So if you're going to do it on site. It should feel like everybody is part of the community. Although I think that that a number of folks, just because of of uh, restrictions on the number of units you can do based on parcel size and whatnot, the uh, more folks are are likely, as Karen said, to fund the affordable housing trust and let us build it somewhere else. Yeah, that's fine. I just I just want to be sure that we, you know, that we noted noted this bylaw. And that we were attentive to how it could potentially be restrictive in us creating affordable units. That's all. Yeah. If if we know about it, and we've already thought about it, and there's ways around it um, that already exist, great. I just didn't want something to get you know past us. That's all. Okay. All right. Good Patrick, point. But does it does the uh, does our bylaw uh, the res the residential inclusionary bylaw that's passed does it have this language five times the eighty percent? Yeah. Is that what the amount that's of money the they have to put mm -hmm. in? Okay. And it's for a family of four. Because eighty percent depends on the family size. 
Right, but it's right. the bylaw says 80% yeah. of the. So right now, for the family of four, I think it's around 84. So five times 84 is 200 and five, five, times, eight, five times 84. God, I'm getting tired already. 420 grand per unit, <laughs> 425 per unit that you have to subsidize. So I think for every 10 you put in, you have to either have one of those be uh, affordable if it's on site or pay 425 into the trust. It's cheaper to pay into the trust, frankly. Yeah, yeah. That's fine. It works. Okay. All right. All right. Um, could we move, move along? So, looking at in the section that uh, Karen wrote, but which I did not share with all of you yet, um, she highlights some housing strategies overall that we should consider as we develop what our what our plan would look like. And those include capacity building, and that's really for the trust. So uh, conduct more on the community outreach and education so that the community is consistently aware of whatever plans we might have in terms of housing and, and are communicating with them about why we're planning that, what the nature of the plan is, et cetera. Also to capitalize the trust more, which could be what we were just talking about in terms of being paid funds that are being paid into the trust or an expansion of the amount of CPC funding that comes to the trust in, in a given year. Um, and there could be several other sources that would help capitalize the trust. But then also to look at and try to identify funding sources that would help build affordable housing overall. I have, a, I have a question on that because it seems like the Healy administration has got this big program, affordable yes. housing, 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 housing. And and <clears throat> I don't know if there are any people like the Boyds who are the experts on these grants who might also be knowledgeable about mm -hmm. how to tap into whatever funds are coming along or whether Smitty's office or uh, Senator Marks who, you know, can, can, can help us uh, because there could be stuff out there that we don't know about and we don't know how to look for it and or how to look for it. And Exactly. So I think one of the things that we'd want to do is have one or more of us um, be kind of on the on the case for going and identifying and okay. learning. You know, more. Yeah. yeah. And, and the how and the draft plan includes, um, you know, in the appendency, a whole um, kind of description of housing resources and then under specific strategies includes additional resources, you know, uh, mentioning the housing bond bill, mentioning some relatively newer resources, some housing preservation resources. Most importantly, though, you need a project. Once you get a project, that's where you're going to, the financing is going to become really important. And how best to deal with that is to get a savvy partner developer who has a good track record with the state and knows how to um, kind of, uh, you know, secure the multiple layers of financing you typically do need for a particular project. <laughs> so it's not like the state's going to be doling out money to just put in your affordable trust and do something good right. with it. No, they no. They're going to want to say, oh, okay, we like that project. It's 50 exactly. units. It's $20 million. That's exactly. Okay, here we go. Exactly. Good. Um, then there are also, as in the document, a, a number of zoning strategies. One would be to, in looking at ADUs, and this is really, I would think we all agree, only after we find what the governor's plan might be to, uh, that would affect ADUs overall in Massachusetts. And then to the extent that we think we want to modify that or put some conditions on it separate from what the state would, would enact we can do that. Um, we might pursue having more diverse housing types in certain areas of town, which is a, not a general kind of change in zoning, but might be specific in certain areas. Um, we might move toward permitting more multifamily and mixed use development near downtown. Uh, and we might look at modifying the cottage era bylaw. I know that one. It, it was suggested in the diagnostic zoning diagnostic report that the planning board did. 
I know it's a very controversial one, and so we probably want to talk through that. And what well, change is controversial. The actual cause of your bylaw isn't controversial now. I mean, right. I don't think. And I think you said, Patrick, there are only two properties that would come under that. Well, there's two that are in, have been discussed lately, you know, 37 Air Lake and then Uncork. But, um, but, you know, if, uh, you know, there's many, many properties with uh, a cottage era estate on them. Yeah, I don't know. If, you know, I, I'm assuming that Eden Hill is not for sale anytime soon, but that's an example of one that there's mm -hmm. enough land and, you know, and, uh, uh, you know, the, the, what were the, Liz, you maybe you know this, on this, that diagnostic report, what were the planning board's recommendations for modification? I thought they were recommended getting away, getting rid of it. Mm -hmm. We don't want to implement that then. No, because they didn't recommend that. that. Because if we, if we do that, we've just erased any funding we have from the residential inclusionary mm -hmm. bylaw. Because mm -hmm. the residential inclusionary bylaw does not cover subdivisions. It only covers special permits. So you get rid of, if you take the advice of what we've written here, per the planning board zoning diagnostic report, we have literally eliminated our mm -hmm. best sources of funding in the short term. So we don't probably want it. That one we probably should modify. I, I think I think I think maybe what we meant to say here, or I should put words no, in mouth. What I would suggest we say here is is consider whether 80 acres is the right amount of acres. Was too little or too much? You know, in terms of like the the minimum acreage required before it could be a special permit. But mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. I yeah, the that, that's the way to open up more properties. Mm -hmm. Karen, go ahead, Karen. I was going to say the diagnostic report kind of points to opportunities where the town might get greater benefit out of, um, you know, a clustering bylaw and dealing with reuse of historic properties or just larger properties uh, to benefit the community. And it points to Lennox's estate um, bylaw as well as to other kinds of options so i think it's just a matter of exploring some additional options to potentially get a little bit better use of the um the, the good thought behind the bylaw itself okay Just Patrick, to be clear, do you think there are any things that need to be done to the cottage era bylaw? I mean, it's a, it's, it's there's a lot of flexibility in it now. I mean, you know, some people have argued that uh, that they should all have. I believe that there's a requirement that there's single family homes in parts of it. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, so having basically zero lot lines, allowing condos might be one thing, but you know, um, but for the two properties in question, we have where there's a lot of land. I think that there's a there's not a lot of I haven't got any feedback from them that 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 well, I say them from from a you know a, well Patchian tried to change bylaws based on what he wanted to see and that failed and I haven't gotten any requests from the Elmcorp folks to change bylaws so you know I think it's a good start. And what did he want to change? I was a whole zoning. He he. Well, I'll let you do it. He, he wanted to put a, a lot more. It's R two. It's R two in some parts. It's I think it's R one. He wanted to expand by right density. Right, and he was, was going to put in a lot, a lot of things there, and and zoning doesn't allow that. But he's now he's he's definitely got seven lots in the front that are covered underneath the old bylaws, and so and it won't be part of the R the residential inclusionary thing because he came to us two weeks before it went in. Yeah, but he was just locked in the. I know. It, um, right. It's a special permit. So anyway, it's they're not going to be big, big, big things. And it was lots of condos. There'll be houses from what it looks like, but we have no plans. We just know that he's. He did a subdivision plan. They filed a week before town meeting, but uh, unless he's going to tear down the main house and put a subdivision road through it, which was in that plan, um, that was just a that was just a freeze of zoning, but mm -hmm. it's still a special permit. And um, that has to be unanimous. Yeah. By the selectmen. Yeah. So we'll see. Everything's in negotiation. Okay. Then there are a set of development and preservation strategies that we should also be looking at. 
<coughs> one which we've talked about several times was to partner with a developer on privately owned sites uh, or to make suitable public property if we had some available. I'm not sure we have much available to do this, but if, uh, if we did, we could uh, look at that property for, for affordable housing. And it could be even donated property down the road or tax foreclosed property, then there are multiple options for mm -hmm. what that might include um, compared to what we have right now. There might be future ones that are more than that. Uh, and then also to establish housing preservation initiatives. And this would be, I think, along the lines of um, the repair grant that we were just talking about earlier. Might be a good example of that. Yeah. By the way, that is a loan. It's not a grant. The CDBG funded um, programs are typically 0% deferred uh, payment uh, loans. I think, isn't there a time limit? Grants are grants, right? No, no, no. For the, the, the typical pro, well, they're, the they're grants for the community, process. but for this kinds of programs, they're usually loan, they're, they're, they're structured as loans. I understand. I'm asking about the community block grants. Yes. That's a, that's a grant. It's a grant to the community, but the actual, I, I thought you were talking about the, the, the actually to the homeowners was a grant. I just wanted to say it's not, it's a loan. Well, but it, it forgives over for five or 10 years, right? Typically? It's 15. It's 0%. 15, typically. 15. All right, good. That's fine. Yeah. So it's a great deal. It. It's a great deal. Yeah. So people can't flip it and, uh, you know. So do they pay anything for 15 years? Um, usually you, usually they're English? deferred. The payments are, t are deferred. Um, if yeah, yeah. they sell the house within the 15 years, then typically yeah. they have to repay or at least repay a certain portion of it. Right. This is a meeting pertaining to the Thompson? No. 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 <laughs> Vern, um, we'd love, uh, uh, I think you want to go over to the selectman's room. It's the, uh, the other in the hall yeah, to the left yeah, on the I, other end. I don't know my way around. That's okay. Oh, that's okay. okay. Yep, thank All you. Right. Yeah. Just keep so, walking to the other end. All right, thank you. Nice hat. Um, okay, so what I what I was hoping we might do today um, was to have a conversation about what each of us would say are the highest priority things we should try to put on the list of things that this trust is going to try to accomplish in the next five years. And they would be an integral part then of the housing production plan when we finish writing that up. And so I've listed on this a document I sent you kind of some candidates, although there may be others that uh, you want to add to it. Um, but the ones that I have here, and, and I'd like to see if we could each weigh in on what we think of these and if there are others we think should be on here. Um, is I this the thing with the um, cluster, two family? This is a version or, oh, there, All right. okay. Do you have one of these, Bruce? I, mean, I have I have what you just handed out, but you said sent and, and I- Right, and I asked this one. Okay. Is All this right. the one I don't have, Randy? Yes, yes. it is. <laughs> I'm sorry. It is. Email too? I'll, um, can you send it? Oh, uh, can you just take a picture of it and send it to him? Like computer at home. Okay. So, um, we'll be like kids. Or can you share it? Well, no, okay. Never mind. That's fine. I'll do that. Just take a picture. Coming your way, Bruce. Not of me, of this. It's coming from Patrick. <laughs> Got it. I'm like a, a spy in World War II here. Yeah. And I think it's more like kids. This is what kids do. <laughs> Take a picture of it. Spies would have loved sure. to have that camera right. World War II. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so the first, let me yeah. just uh, walk through these and you'll get it in a second, Bruce. Um, the first one that I've identified here is to develop funding or loan programs to enable Stockbridge homeowners to make needed home and energy renovations, including community notification and application assistance, depending on who's administering that program. So this would include the community block grants we were just talking about, but there may be other uh, okay. things yeah. we want to be doing over the next five years. So Karen, yeah. Karen, are there category? Excuse me, Jan. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, uh, Karen. Question for you: 
Um, yeah. it, are there other programs that you know of that are similar in focus to the community block grant where we can raise state or federal money and, and deploy it to, to repair? Yeah, home? I, you know, I, um, I actually uh, list a whole slew of programs that are sponsored by uh, state government um, that are included under this is, you know, establishing housing preservation initiatives. The, you know, you're going for the best one, the CDBG program, that housing rehab program is a tried and true type of, uh, uh, of, of program to help qualifying homeowners. Um, but there are other resources that are becoming available or are available that people can be referred to. And uh, those are listed in the um, draft. In, in the one we haven't seen. Yeah, right. Yeah. All right. But CBD, or blah, blah, blah. <laughs> the, uh, the block grants are the, uh, are the granddaddy ones. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think we have that going. I mean, I hope. It's it's on on its way. Again. Sounds like it. So that's that's a start. The yeah. second, yeah, the second one would be to identify one or two properties to develop new ownership or rental housing for middle income and capital A affordable housing. Properties or the projects. Projects. Yeah. We could say projects. Bruce, do you have it? Not yet, but I like that one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, and I and I added to that that the developers to work with the town and the developers to assure that whatever development we might have on that property is or project is consistent with our community. So it would be to to try to make sure that it's going to fit in well in the community. The third one would be working with the planning board to address the ADU bylaw af if it's required after the governor's changes to that. What about Jan, if it's not required under the governance bond bonding bill? I mean, it seems to me there was still a lot of support uh, support voiced, um, voiced for uh, ADUs. So are you just saying if it's required or something? I'm saying if uh, depending on what the governor legislation does that eventually gets passed it will do something about ADUs presumably I mean it may yeah. it may get tabled but assuming that it doesn't get tabled and it'll say something about it and it's at that point, to, yeah and I think at that point we might want to say well we'll take a look at what that says and decide whether that is the best option for Stockbridge or if we think some other modification to that would be the best thing for Stockbridge. Yes, Patrick. I think that we might want to take a more general approach to state level housing changes. For example, um, ADUs is one thing they might do, the parameters and whether there are, and what the uh, ability to layer on regulations around ADUs is unclear at this point. But until we know we're debating something that is out of our hands. Right. Similarly, the question of the uh, of a regional approach to housing, where there's there's a, a number of folks um, in our school district uh, have been having informal conversations about the need to coordinate efforts as enrollment declines. If we're all building housing at the same relative rate. Nobody saves money on school taxes at the expense of another community. But if one is building housing and the other two aren't, for example, then that, that town would see an increase in their taxes to the detriment or to, to the benefit of the other two communities. So having a regional approach to housing makes a lot of sense. And that's one of the things in the housing bond bill. Now, the thing in the housing bond bill, which I don't know if it's good for the town or not, but We'll see if uh, we'll see if it gets in there. And the final version is the the real estate transfer fee uh, over at, for the Porsche sales over a million dollars. Um, these are all areas that we're going to need to evaluate as a town related to affordable housing that are that might end up in the final bill. But the final bill hasn't even got through the housing committee yet, let alone banking and finance and you know there's like there's a million 
not a million, there's probably a dozen committees this thing has to pass through. And if it passes, it's going to be more like July, not January. And whatever, whatever part of it comes out, I'm sure some parts of it will pass. So this is going to be, this document is going to be done by the time the housing bond bill passes. All right. So I think we should just, I mean, Karen, look, this is something I'm saying that you disagree with. You're the expert. Um, I think we should basically say we're going to evaluate what our options are based on that the governor's whatever, based on whatever, you know, uh, uh, housing changes become law this year. And we don't need to, whether it's ADUs or some other aspect of it, we'll, we're going to look at all of it. I don't think we say just this year because she's going to be governor for four years. Yeah, well, I'm talking You're about this specific eight, right? bill. This, yeah. You know, we don't know what parts are going to Isn't that pass. what this says? I mean. Well, it, it, I think Patrick is saying let's make this one broader so it's not yeah. just the ADU bylaw. Right. Let's, could let's be look regional at housing. It could be, uh, could, you know, there's a lot, of, a lot of other components of that that we're going to need to evaluate. That seems okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can okay. change that. Yeah. I could have, so in other words, I could have used one word broader and not talk for two minutes. Is that the, is <laughs> all, in, yeah. all encompassing all housing legislation? Okay. <laughs> okay, the fourth one is to work with Construct and the Stockbridge Housing Authority to address maintenance needs at Pine Woods and Heaton Court. I know they're pri that Pine Woods is private property, but it is part of the affordable housing uh, inventory that we have in Stockbridge. And to the extent that it has some significant maintenance needs, I think it ought to be something that our committee is helping to foster mm -hmm. identifying what those needs are and moving forward, helping Construct move forward. And, and Heaton and, Court is owned by the state. The town is not Heaton Court. They're both owned by outside party. Yeah. Wait a minute. The Stockbridge Housing Authority doesn't own Heaton Court? No, the state of Massachusetts owns Heaton Court. Stockbridge Housing Authority manages, you know, manages it as an appointed representative from the town, you know, some from the tenants and some from the state. Right. Yeah. Does, does the state? The state, uh, actually, uh, the state of Massachusetts. The state of Massachusetts owns it. Yeah. The Commonwealth. So as I, oh, yeah. And do they kick money in every year to keep it going, or hopefully? <laughs> no, they, she, yeah. yeah, I mean, she does. She does a great job of getting money from the state. But I wasn't. No, it wasn't a question. The question was, does the state subsidize it? Yes, it does. All right. Um, yeah. Okay. yeah. Well, but you have only if we apply. It doesn't automatically just well, give. No, the state owns yeah, that. Every year, they get a. Uh, there's a formula for capital improvements, and they get. Um, so oh, they they get some funding from the state every year without applying without applying well they have to do their budget and tell, yeah. tell the what they need you know yeah they, but it's kind of it's based pretty much on a formula that I'm, I'm just curious i i didn't understand that that and is that is that a usual way that the state actually buys land and and funds the building of housing oh this it was, was 1970. This was years and years ago. In 1970 is yeah. when it was built. No, it was built in uh, 80. It was built in the 80s. In court. Yeah. I think it opened in 80, right? I don't remember. Yeah. Uh, for some reason, uh, the documents I saw said, it doesn't matter, 70s, 80s. So whatever that is, 50 years ago. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, Ross Carter was up for the dedication, wasn't she? No, I was a child. <laughs> Yes, yeah, most public housing was built years ago when they actually had financing directed to developing public housing. And uh, so it's been harder uh, since then to develop. It doesn't mean that there there are other resources that are available now to do some development, but it's a different kind of animal. Yeah. But, it, you know, it's bear in mind, anything that's done in heat and court has to also involve the... Uh, the HLC, uh, the State uh, Housing and Livable Communities Department. I mean, it, it, you, 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 it's, you can't just, the Housing Authority has to deal with the state very. Um, they've already talked to them about the expansion, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Okay, they've talked to the state. Yeah. About now, if there is anything going forward with development, it's a matter of working with the state on it. I mean, they, they, they kind of are in charge. Well, it sounds if they own the land, they aren't totally in charge. 
Um, interesting. <clears throat> the fifth one I have here is uh, the exactly this topic of exp exploring mm -hmm. expansion at Heaton Court, which is its own kind of project in a way. So these are five that I've identified. Are there others that any of you would identify, including Karen, that you think should be on this list as the highest priority things for this trust to be focused on in the next five years? I, I would love to see a sort of a, a, a tiny house overlay district, personally, where we could basically encourage a one or two tiny house uh, projects, even if they weren't subsidized, just basically, I don't know of any zoning in the county that allows them. And I think it'd be great if we were one, just basically, you know, uh, uh, you know. Did you say overlay district? Yeah, so okay. some small part of town where you could basically put in a much more density right. with tiny house, right. houses and really create incentives to give people mm -hmm. ways to live in three or four hundred square feet. Yeah. It might make most sense just to go through the friendly 40B process instead of going through a whole rezoning process. If you're going to do yeah. you know, a cluster of uh, of small homes, um, I mean, it, just food for thought. Okay. So how would that work, Karen? Well, well it, I mean, for example, if uh, you decided to acquire property or you had some donated property, you would do a uh, request for proposals. You you to get a you know that would include all the terms and conditions of that development that you'd like to see in that development. You mm -hmm. would then issue the RFP. You get responses. You'd select the best most qualified developer based on the responses. And then you would, um, it, with respect to permitting, with, the town would jointly apply with the developer to the state uh, as housing and livable communities to get the go ahead to submit a uh, comprehensive permit to the Zoning Board of Appeals. So um, basically through a friendly 40B, the town and the developer agree to the basic program terms and conditions of the development and work together on permitting, as well as advocacy, financing, et cetera. Right. Mm -hmm. So as opposed to my idea, which is just do an overlay district that limited to a certain part of town, and then you leave it up to private developers, then it's not an affordable development where, you, where you've got income restrictions and whatnot, I was just saying. But either one would be great. Um, yeah, so let's say, for example, someone gave us 30 acres and had three buildable areas on it. Maybe one is for single family homes and another could be for tiny homes. And the number in the single family home area would be much smaller than, let's say, in the tiny home area. Mm -hmm. But you could basically say, you know, we kind of want to create kind of a, a campus of homes of one might be targeted toward, you know, people in their 20s who are single and could want to, you know, kind of live in a tiny footprint with solar or whatever. And another area might be for, you know, families of three or four who uh, need a little bit more space and, you know, uh, but it would be just a way for us to kind of incorporate a lot of age groups and a lot of different stages of life into mm -hmm. how we approach them. So that would be more like a develop a developer might come in and do 10 or 12 tiny homes as opposed to and individuals four, and four or six. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I, I mean, it sounds like an overlay district would allow an individual to put a tiny home as opposed to this friendly 40 B, which sounds like would be more yeah. multiple yeah. units. Well, really not, uh, you know, you know, uh, other than zoning around the building code and that's something I don't know a lot about, <clears throat> you don't really need extra permission to build a smaller house. Right. So if we're talking a house, but if you want to, if you had, 10 acres and you wanted to build 15 of them because even though they're tiny and right. even 15 times 400 is only 6,000 square feet. We build lots of houses that are over 6,000 square feet now. Those 15, because you'd be considered 15 different homes right. we were zoning for. So that's an example of kind of the overlay district. It was basically saying, you know, there's really not much more, if you're on sewer, there's not much more impact mm -hmm. of having 10 or 15 tiny homes is two or three McMansions. Oh, and a lot yeah. more traffic and vehicles and, and stuff. Yeah, depends on where it is. Well, if yeah. it's in town, they're walking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you're right. There could be some little <laughs> tiny home yeah. development in town. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, I see some of the parking lots for some of these giant houses, you know. Mm -hmm. And driveways. Yeah. Um, anyway, whatever. Okay. Just okay. dreaming, dreaming out loud. Any any others that anyone would like to bring up? Well, I, I, it's not really another. I, I mean, working off of this list, I, I feel like, um, <clears throat> you know, when you think of these affordable housing developments, you can think about the Bentley apartments where you really swing for the fences and hit a home run with 30 or 40 units in one location, which doesn't sound very Stockbridge to me. Mm -hmm. Or, and it's very ambitious and very expensive. Or I, I think I, this idea of picking off things here and there, I mean, converting a big house into three or four units, or at least a two-family house, or finding out more about whatever properties are available in town where you could work with a developer to make a house. For example, I don't know who handles in the town, keeps track of the tax lien properties. Somebody's treasurer. treasurer. I actually think it would be interesting to invite the treasurer to one of our meetings to give us an update on on where, where are we with this? What's available? Uh, where does it stand? Why does it take so long? Um, we've had this thing where people, the housing court seems like the place where ideas go to die and, 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 and things take a very long time. I don't know why they don't hire 10 more judges and 20 more clerks and make this thing work. But if the couple we have, uh, as I understand it, they are completely ramshackle, run down. You're, you're talking about it's yeah. similar to the LeVan yeah. property. They're tear down, so you start over. The land, especially depending on the neighborhood you're buying it in, the land is, we can get land that's relatively inexpensive. It's figuring out how to put something on it and have access to water and sewer. I just don't know that the tax title um, you know, I mean, it's just, it's not going to be any cheaper to renovate something that is basically, you know, similar to that LeVan property that is already sort of run down and, and might be, you know, full of lead paint and other things. It's just yeah. you know, public housing has got all sorts of strict rules. I'll also say that, uh, you know, uh, if it could be renovated, it's, you know, we would, the town is going to work really hard to find and, and usually these are, you know, it was called and test it when you're, there's no one, basically there's like uh, there's an no, estate that right. nobody knows who the heirs are. Mm -hmm. We're going to work really hard to find the heirs because somebody owns that property in all likelihood, you know, you know, it's not, we just weren't, it, 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 Michael it, came in, we weren't really focused on moving these along. Now we're moving them along, but it's still a couple of years out, I think. So it would be interesting to know, though, if somebody could come in and tell us what is it, you know, what does it take to do that? How long do you write to these people and not get yeah. a response? I think we could use right. an education on this area because we we're looking for properties, places where we can do smaller things. If there's already a house there, putting an, another better one there or fixing that one up is a is a is not a controversial thing in the in the town. And um, and it's more manageable than yeah. the Bentley Street yeah. 40 unit thing. Yeah. I'm just saying in the area of picking off things, which are, are maybe more doable than some giant project, um, we need to know as much as we can about the, the land that's available in the town. And even just as an affordable housing trust, we should be knowledgeable and educated about that part of the land mm -hmm. that's sort of like there's a house on route on route seven mm -hmm. as you head out of town. Mm -hmm. It's maybe the last house in Stockbridge yeah, you know I'm talking about. Yeah. 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 Um, I don't know what the story is on that. Um, I have a friend over there, Keith Raftery, who mm -hmm. lives near there, and he says they can't. That's the one. They can't track people down, or I don't know if it is or not. But, yeah, that was, um, it's. I mean, I know they've been. That doesn't look that land court though. It's, it could be right. a year, could be three years, and well, but we've got a five-year plan, so maybe so, you know, so Mark, that license in there. So, Mark, you're looking for the proverbial low-hanging fruit. It sounds like. Um, man, yeah, for us, manageable. Um, Something to focus on that, you know, if you could find something and, and, and pursue it and work up, work with the housing, with the developer or builder or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yes. I mean, I guess it, I guess it's a, a more, a more available idea than, than a 30 acre thing with a bunch of, you know, 10 houses on it or 12 well, houses, which and it also it's, might... it's potentially something that we could expedite much more quickly than, than some of these other projects that we're talking about if yeah. they exist. 
And, and the, I mean, that's, the money. and the plan <laughs> calls for that basically to look for a couple of properties. I'm right. just saying one of the places to look is maybe to where there's already a house, right. and, and 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 you know. And maybe it could work something like the, the way they did it in Lenox, where a developer went in and rehabbed some houses, and I think he may have put up some other ones, but they auctioned off two of them, as mm -hmm. you know, and that that I see as a more feasible thing to do with those properties. Okay. All right. Well, yes, I, I mean, you know, the concept of taking an existing property, and although it's clearly not analogous because what, what occurred in Boston uh, were not affordable houses, uh, but where people took, you know, two or three story brownstones in Beacon Hill um, that, you know, were basically not being well utilized or in fact were being run down because they're, and they basically, a developer came in, and if it was a three-story building, they basically made three or six, depending upon the square footage on each floor, um, apartments that, that were then, you know, auctioned off or sold off. Now, again, these were, you know, million-dollar properties, which we're not talking about. But certainly, to have somebody come in with a, you know, a reasonably sized single-family home, and basically, you know, renovate it in, into, you know, two or three units you know one on each floor um it certainly is a much more doable and potentially more expeditious way of creating something and get and you know and basically get a chit get something done that um that starts to address the need here it's not going to be a, you know it's not going to chip away at, at a huge percentage of it but it'll at least show that we are we're we're moving ahead and trying to do something to address this problem that we're here to address. Now, instead of auctioning <laughs> off the properties, the housing trust could actually subsidize the units so that they are affordable, either as a rental or first time home ownership, depending. Um, and the idea of converting larger properties to multiple units is actually included in, in the draft under allowing more diverse housing types in certain areas. Oh, yeah. I know it is. I just think, yeah. uh, you know, in follow on to what Mark was, was discussing, I think no, it, it is something sense. that it's a high, should be a high priority because it's something that can potentially be done uh, much uh, with much, much, with much less um, of a burden than some of the mm -hmm. other things of thinking about a 30 unit property or a property that has 15 new tiny houses on it. Um, it you know, I, I, I kind of like, you know, the direction that I think I heard Mark going in, um, which is to chip away at a small number of things through an existing property that could be modified. Aaron, I have a question. You mentioned uh, that some of this could be either rental or ownership if you did a, a, a house like this. If it's a rental, it needs a management company or a management thing. I mean, do we? Does right. the town? Does the town ever become the landlord and 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 run no, the thing? No, but housing authorities do. Okay. So so our housing authority, in addition to Eden Court, could have a couple of properties dotted around town that they're yeah. manage. Okay. Good. Thank you. There are other, you know, nonprofit uh, housing organizations in the region too that might, you know, be interested in doing it, but local housing authority would probably be the best bet. Mm -hmm. Sandwich Thank does you. that. They actually go out and they acquire property and then they own and manage those properties as rentals. Yarmouth has a program called Building Dreams that does that for rentals too, in addition to home ownership. So there's some decent models out there. Good. Okay. Any other items? We have seven at the moment and there are seven of us on the trust. So. Seven? <laughs> yes. Oh. Right what now. have you added? And the tax title. The, ti the tiny house. Oh, tiny. Friendly 40B and the uh, multiple housing. You know, the tax title thing, um, maybe instead of having the treasurer come here, I can have a meeting, learn about it, and then do a little presentation on it. That's it. Oh. That would be good. Well, who's our treasurer? <laughs> I'm looking too fast. <laughs> Eric. No, I, I was just thinking, I mean, where the land, look at the idea of renovating larger, older homes and turning them into multiple units and potentially subsidizing some of them, the source of those homes is almost irrelevant. 
like the textile part seems like it's sort of an afterthought to the bigger concept, which is, you know, like if, if there's an 8,000 square foot house built in 1930, uh, you know, we could turn it into six units. Do we have the zoning that first of all, all allows it? And we have the funding, second of all, to Even get the work done. And then no, and no, units. so far, there's two no's on that. Just to buy, it. Okay. Just right. to yeah. buy it, you're looking yeah. at a huge. But if, there, if there's any value in that, I assure you that, that of the one or two that I know of, you know, you got the, um, you know, the, you got the, the, the gas station on Route 7, right, right by the theater group. Mm -hmm. That's in tax title. That was a brownfield that we had to remediate, which we did. Um, you got another one, I think, on Route 7, the one that you, you were talking about. And I think there may be one other one, but those are really run down. I mean, mm -hmm. like, like the point of being shacks that have holes in the roof, sort of similar to the Levan. I mean, it's, it, there's no, you know, it's more the, you know, the, the bones have to have good structure to turn it into, yeah. you know, turn into something. And that's really just about zoning more, I think, than, yeah. than, the, than whether or not, you know. Those well. properties might belong better in the attorney general's receivership program, which is really meant to deal with properties that are uh, really in bad shape and they hire receivers to, to they don't have to necessarily take over ownership, but they actually uh, hire receivers to, you know, in, make the necessary improvements and get the property stabilized. Who, who pays for the improvements? The, the, um, there's state money. And then it can be converted to a, to a home that's available to, uh, the community somehow people can buy it or rent it or uh well typically they're still dealing with the um it's just you're still dealing with the um the uh, well sometimes the receivers can can basically convey property uh on their own um after they uh, they've gone through and stabilized the property some of the units that remain occupied they just stabilizing the tenants so it's, um, you know, it's, it's not one single uh, situation. What is it called again, the Attorney General's? Attorney General's Receivership Program. I think that's actually, they changed it. Maybe it's neighborhood. It's in the draft. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Thank you. Okay, anything else? What about the, the one other to add to the list, the DeSisto property on, on uh, 183, Liz? What about it? Well, not the, not the big one, not the big one. Uh, the, 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 there's a house that you, in the winter, you can, you can see it now. You're talking about across the street? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Because you looked it up for me, mm -hmm. and it, it are, are you familiar with it? Which, where is it? It's across the street from DeSisto. It's set back a little bit. I think it has black shutters. It's, is it it's abandoned? Been, or? It's, I don't think there's think been anybody the in there. I think Capesci knows that one, too. There's one that oh, you Probably, yeah. Who who owns it? Pat Sheehan. Patrick Sheehan. Probably all part of the same uh, thing. DeSisto. You think he, he owns it? I'm pretty sure that I can find it. You looked it up for me. I know. Why are we talking about properties? What's the question? Well, I'm talking about another, there's another specific crop. That property is abandoned. No one's living there, and the trees are growing up around it. I mean, it's uh, yeah. That, mm -hmm. But is somebody paying the taxes? But they weren't it'd be in receiver. It would be it'd be in tax title if they weren't. So you know. Um, One thing we need to be mindful of is we already have seven things, so we can't have. A huge long list. I mean, you, you put them on there, but we've got to have someone assigned to, you know, be carrying the ball if we're going to put them on this list, I would argue. Well, so I'm not sure she uh, on the On the conversion to the two to multifamily, uh, in, in looking at the challenges, it, it, the zoning just looks so onerous and so restrictive. The zoning looks like it was designed not to let this happen. I mean, converting a property requiring then extra setbacks, extra square footage on the property. It was almost like, well, we want to make sure that doesn't happen, so let's put these onerous burdens on the idea so it won't happen, and it hasn't happened. Um, I mean, I really think you've got to get down to the zoning thing. What I don't know is whether, I've heard this phrase spot zoning as a no-no. It's like for, you know, can zone for one piece of property. Yeah, because yeah. I think it would be very controversial in the town to 
do a blank check elimination of two and four acres. That wouldn't happen, right? That won't happen. No, no. All right. So then if, if that doesn't happen, how do you even begin to approach the idea of then converting uh, a large home into multifamily when, unless you do a spot zoning thing and say, here's a particular project, can we change the zoning for that? Or do it. Square foot house, you could write a special permit. There could be a bylaw that allows an existing structure to be turned into multifamily. Mm -hmm. There's no change yeah. in. Right. There's no change in zoning, in, uh, okay. in more nonconformance or whatever. It's, right. it's, it's, um, it's. I don't think that that's either controversial. Or do it. We, we, there are many, many large homes on Main Street that can convert, were converted into condos, and it was it's a good thing. You know, look at a, yeah. the, yeah. you know, look at the, the, um, the Henderson house now has three or four units on that property, uh, including yeah. Jacks. You got, you got the one that, uh, you know, that. Uh, Where are you? There's yeah, another one. Lives in, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of those houses got swept, and there's right. a couple of several of them that took so worse. I'm they... sure that, I mean, there's a whole row of them. I, yeah. I, think, that, I think that the question is whether or not it's, I haven't studied this part, but is, this, is the ability to do that easier in the downtown district than it is elsewhere, Liz? Do we know? I don't know because I have never had to deal with it. All right. I think, I think, I think, I think, right, though, it is a zoning thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think the footage requirements. Were, were more uh, friendly to that idea in the RC mm -hmm. than, than they are in mm -hmm. the outer in the outer sure. areas. And uh, that makes sense, too, to, mm -hmm. to have those things closer to downtown. Right. I just don't know what properties there are that, you know, could could be in that district that, that are would have be available for this or owners are interested in doing it or whatever. But well, uh, they might come to us for a special permit. <laughs> yeah. Patrick, do you know uh, the history of the large home that's on the same side as Nam Keg, um, and it, it, it the large uh, the lawn is all clear, and it's been converted some time ago to condominium. That's called uh, it's Orno, right? That's right. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The big yeah. stone that's place. Liz, you know. Yeah, that was part of Boston. It was Boston. Yeah, it was the Tanglewood Center. Right. Tanglewood Music Center. And they sold it, and it's Orno, and it's got quite a few. Quite a few. There's some other buildings that are part of that complex too, aren't there? Yes, not just behind the big them. building. Yeah. Yeah. What are they like? Five hundred square feet in there. Eight hundred square feet. Yeah. Square feet. Yeah. yeah, some are bigger than others. Eight hundred thousand dollars. Million dollars. Yeah. Well, they're they're when so you look at the inside, so when you consider what it looked like before, no, it's really quite lovely. I mean, so. No, I'm just saying they're they're. Uh, it's not affordable though. No. It's not. It's market. Yeah. But it, it the process was what I was interested in. Uh, that was long before. Okay, so that's yeah. happened quite some time ago. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like 20, I'm not in At ancient least. times, but in our lifetime. I mean, it was, right. it was a music center until when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. Me too. Uh, the Prospect Hill? Yeah. Was it yeah, that used that's to be the music house. center before it moved to right. West well, Street. Uh, well, but, they, they housed people there, too. Yeah. What, what I'm hearing is that if we made this one of the items on our list to mm -hmm. do some exploration, find out what the facts are about the zoning mm -hmm. and what various projects might look like and it is different in the RC zone versus elsewhere. And is is there an opportunity to do some things? Or There's two not? really big houses for sale right now. One is, um, I don't know the name. Houses for sale. Yes, oh. that's that's for like twelve. That's like ten million. That's I think it's ten. Not quite affordable. Maybe ten or eleven. Okay. Make up for that's, that's never going to be affordable housing. No, <laughs> not that not that one. But no. but uh, Lola. Lola Jaffe's place? Yeah, it's on the market. Yeah. Yeah. Can we write this yeah. up? Can yeah, right. It's right. hungry. <laughs> so um, <laughs> moving right along. So I think where, where we'll go from here is uh, Karen and I are going to work on uh, doing some edits or modifications to the current draft. Mm -hmm. And hopefully Liz would be willing to work with us mm -hmm. on that and anyone else who would like to chime in and participate in that you're welcome to but the idea would be to try to have a, dra a final draft that we would um, bring to the committee before the next meeting if possible so that you could have a chance to read through it it would reflect what we were just talking about in these um, plans mm -hmm. as well as the ge more general strategies that karen has already written up in that draft do we want to try to have a meeting before christmas I think we need to meet next week. No. I'm serious. For what? 
Okay. I think we need a quick meeting next week. To, well, then this won't be ready for that. That's not what I'm <laughs> okay. talking about. Okay. I mean, can we talk about the agenda for the next meeting and yeah. then you guys decide? Yeah. We have an opportunity for a donated property as, as okay. no secret. Um, we, I, I had a chance to talk to town council today about what the standard process is to um, do the due diligence and evaluate the property as well as uh, what the order of operations are, order of, of sequence of operations are around writing the RFP, um, defining the project parameters, you know, uh, uh, and, and none of this is hard, but it's going to take a little bit of, uh, of an appropriation by us. Uh, both for legal work and for and for some you know you know kind of you know engineering slash environmental type so uh, you know but because it's not on the agenda we can't vote to do that right. if we wait till after Christmas It'll we're going to lose a month on the evaluation right. I think we should have a quick meeting yeah. to talk about what these steps are and and authorize the you know expenditure of some limited amount of money got to move the ball upfield yeah <laughs> so um, when can everyone come. Well, next we week on Monday. Five, we got to have five to spend money. So we have to have five people here. Right. Well, uh, I think Michaela will be yeah. otherwise She's occupied. She's good for a while. No. <laughs> I would give no. her a little time. Uh, well, well, look, try Michaela's one. tough. So <laughs> chances are she'll be on the Zoom yeah, sure. very shortly. What's, what's Monday look like? Monday the 27th. Next Monday? Yep. Same time, same place. And you bring gifts. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, yeah, Dan, you, yeah. Well, you could be on Zoom, right? And I might actually be here. Okay, that would be great. At four. That would be better. <laughs> Even better if you're here. <laughs> okay, um, four o'clock? Four o'clock next Monday? Yep. Okay. Oh. Wait, that's the 27th. Yes, yeah, it is. is it today's. <laughs> All right, thank you. So, so it's so going to be a very limited. Is this, is this the only. It's a minute meeting. It's really about just appropriating whatever money we need. Okay, uh, to, I just need to get an agenda in, so and yeah, I'll have yeah, to do that. <laughs> there you go. It's already <laughs> there. So I just took notes. I mean, none of this. I this is. I just took notes. I type a quick typist. Yeah. All right, uh, and we can go over that before you. And then, do you want to pick another meeting sometime early January, when we would have this as a main topic? Yeah, the affordable housing. Well, I mean, we have that, and if this other project mm -hmm. uh, takes off, then it's it'll be a full plate. Um, that's like can we six pick weeks. that meeting date next Monday, or do we need to do it now? Yeah, we can do it next Monday. Let's do it next uh, Monday. I'll bring yeah. my calendar because I, I have some stuff in January, and I it's not in my head, but okay. So we will have a meeting next Monday at four mm -hmm. o'clock. Yep. Okay. Uh, I don't know what room. It'll either be here or in the selectmen. All right. All right. Uh, I make very good. Thank you, everybody. And I make them. Karen, 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 thank you very much. Bruce. Thanks, Bruce. Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Can I make a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. So move. I'll second. Okay. Okay. All right. Liz, I, Patrick. I, thank you all.